Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 12th of June. Today's a red letter day. Today is the day we celebrate St. Barnabas the Apostle. I'd like to read to you from For All the Saints. There were 12 apostles and then some, some others, who never belonged to the original companions of Jesus, but who were also called apostles because they were sent forth to proclaim the gospel. St. Paul was one of these others. So was the man we honor today, the apostle St. Barnabas. The book of Acts says that he was a Jew born in Cyprus, but that he was living in Jerusalem when he joined, quote, the company of those who believed in Jesus. His real name was Joseph. The apostles called him Barnabas, or son of encouragement, because, quote, he sold a field which belonged to him and laid the proceeds at the apostles' feet. By this act, Barnabas encouraged the rest of the disciples to provide for the good of the whole community. According to the book of Acts, Barnabas was the one who introduced Paul to the twelve apostles. Later on, he moved to Antioch and sent for Paul to help him lead the church in that city. From there, Paul and Barnabas set out on a great missionary journey through the cities of Asia Minor and Greece. The two men had a falling out over Mark, who wanted to abandon the mission. Barnabas returned to Cyprus with Mark, and Paul went his separate way. Paul himself mentioned Barnabas many times in his letters, which suggests that he, not Barnabas, was the senior colleague. Paul also gave a more serious reason for their parting company. It happened at Antioch, when Peter went back on his promise to treat pagan converts as equal with Jewish converts. In the acrimonious debate which followed, Barnabas separated from Paul and sided with Peter. We do not know whether Paul and Barnabas were ever reconciled. An ancient tradition testifies only that Barnabas spent the rest of his days preaching in Cyprus. Let us pray. Merciful God, help us to follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown, but the well-being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You know, these episodes show us that even holy men can have very passionate disagreements and have legitimate alternate visions of how the future should unfold. Some scholars, more optimistically, do believe that they were eventually reconciled, Paul and Barnabas. We won't know until we can ask them in glory. But the truth is that this disagreement sent two gifted preachers in different directions, therefore doubling the missionary teams out in the field. It is true that our powerful God, who is a God of peace, can work even through discord. Let us take a deep breath as we continue in our prayer. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end of God's greatness. Together, there is no end of God's greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power together and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you together and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power together and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name for ever and ever together. Let all flesh bless God's holy name for ever and ever. The Lord is glorified in the lives of the saints. O come, let us worship. Psalm 15 is one of the shorter psalms. It contrasts the life of the wicked with that of the righteous. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. 
There is no guile upon their tongue. They do no evil to a friend. They do not heap contempt upon a neighbor. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who revere the Lord. They have sworn to do no wrong and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Let us pray. God of love, teach us to walk blamelessly in your ways, that our whole life may be established in you, and that we may come to the place prepared for us by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37. This uh, describes life in the early church under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. The believers share their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and much grace was upon them all, for there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as they had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This radical generosity is both inspiring and threatening. Most of us like our stuff. Most of us want to keep as much of it as we can. Sometimes this fear, and this fear of Christian communism, wilts the spirit of generosity within us. Here's a note from the Life Application Bible. Hear the concern in it. The early church was able to share possessions and property as a result of the unity brought by the Holy Spirit working in and through the believers' lives. This way of living is different from communism because, one, the sharing was voluntary. Two, it didn't involve all private property, but only as much as was needed. Three, it was not a membership requirement in order to be a part of the church. The spiritual unity and generosity of these early believers attracted others to them. This organizational structure is not a biblical command, but it offers vital principles for us to follow. End quote. There are some good points raised there, of course, but the concern to not be communists seems to override the call to radical generosity. I prefer the call to generosity expressed in the previous note in the same Life Application Bible on verse 32. None of these Christians felt that what they had was their own, and so they were able to give and share, eliminating poverty among them. They would not let a brother or sister suffer when others had plenty. How do you feel about your possessions? We should adopt the attitude that everything we have comes from God, and we are only sharing what already is God's. End quote. Do you remember what we used to say in the church service at the offering? All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. May the same spirit of generosity be at work in us as in the early church. Lord, help us to be generous with all that you give us. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, we pray to you that this day may be holy, good, and peaceful. Together, Lord, we pray to you that the work we do this day and the people we meet may bring us closer to you. Together, Lord, we pray to you that we may be forgiven our sins and offenses and grow in generosity. Lord, we pray to you that we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. Lord, 
we pray to you that you will sustain the faith and hope of the weary, the lonely, the outcast, and the oppressed. Lord, we pray to you that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. Lord, we pray to you. Gathering our prayers, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today, St. Barnabas Day. <laughs>